How do you make a good turbo motor? Easy. Start off with a good NA motor. Hello everybody, I'm Richard Older and welcome to the channel. Please make sure, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff so you can keep getting notified when I do all of these cool testing. Here's the question for today. How to make a really good turbo motor? Well, you need to stop thinking about is my turbo cam going to work? Is my turbo intake going to work? Is my turbo cylinder heads going to work? Don't think about it that way. What you need to start concentrating on is not all these things about your turbo motor, but start thinking about it in terms of your naturally aspirated motor. If you pick a camshaft that's real high RPM, you're going to have a high RPM turbo motor. If you pick a short runner intake manifold that's also high RPM, you're going to have a high RPM turbo motor. If you pick a cylinder head that'll support all that high RPM, you're still going to have a high RPM turbo motor. But by contrast, if you pick a mild camshaft and a good set of heads and the right intake manifold, you can make all that power at a lower engine speed and have more boost response and better drivability because ultimately the turbo is going to dictate how much power you made. Don't believe me? Let's take a look. To get things started, to illustrate that it, it is indeed, in fact, a multiplier of the NA power output when you add a turbo, when you add boost, actually, or when you add nitrous or anything else, your starting point is always whatever you're doing with your NA power curve. To illustrate that, I want to show you two different NA power curves that we added boost from a single turbo to. And you can see that the turbo curve mirrors or mimics the NA curve. So basically just think about the NA power curve as your starting point. And I'm going to show you a perfect illustration here. I can show you hundreds of them because it always works out the same. This was a 4.8 liter. I'll go ahead and take a look at our description here. 4.8 liter is a stock block, stock crank, stock rods. It had JE forged pistons in it. This one we equipped with the following top end combination. We had 317 heads, uh, a BTR stage two positive displacement blower cam, which was a 610 588 lift, 233, 238 uh, degree duration split at 120 degree load separation angle. It had a Holly Ray Sniper, so a short runner fabricated style intake manifold on it, 92 millimeter throttle body, inch and three quarter headers, Holly HP, and 80 pound injectors. This was the power curve produced by that combination. We produced 394 horsepower. Peak power was 323 foot-pounds of torque. This was to illustrate that if you basically made a mistake and made your 4.8 completely wrong, and I have this up in another video, you used a short runner intake manifold, a wide LSA positive displacement blower cam, which shifts all the power to the top end, and a big chamber 317 head, which lowers static compression. And none of those really are an ideal choice for 4.8 liter. Here's what happens when you do it correctly. So you can see this is the power curve and I'll go ahead and label these. The one that's making a lot more power and a lot more torque, we use the same short block. We use a Brian Tooley stage two uh, turbo camshaft in it. You could use any other camshaft, an NA cam, a nitrous cam, whatever. It would make more power because we use the 706 head, which has a smaller combustion chamber, smaller valve, smaller port. We also use the long runner factory truck intake manifold. And so it's just a better combination. Not only does it make more peak power, peak power was 406 or 7 horsepower. Peak torque was all the way up at 363 foot-pounds. So you can see in some of the range, we had gains of like 50 foot-pounds of torque. And that's very, very important because what two things happen. One is that at any given boost level, you'll see that the boost curves mirror the NA curves. So each one of these is your starting point. So if you add seven or eight pounds of boost to each one of these, Basically, you're going to see the same thing. You're just going to see a big difference in power from the better starting NA combination with the long runner manifold, a slightly milder camshaft that doesn't have a really wide LSA that kills all the bottom end and mid-range, and you don't have a short runner intake manifold because all of those things are bad, especially when you're trying to run those things on a very small displacement 4.8 liters. So now let's take a look and see what happens when we added boost to each one of these. Now that we've taken a look at our NA combinations, find out how to make a better NA combination to start out with. Let's find out when we added boost to both of them. So this is the original one that we talked about with the 317 heads, the blower cam, and a short runner intake manifold. And here's what happened when we added boost to that. 
You can see it, it, this has a slightly rising curve. This is nine to nine and a half pounds, let's say out, out at the top of the RPM range. And you can see that it has a very similar shape to the NA curve. It has its increasing power with RPM because we have got a short runner manifold. We've got a wide LSA cam with enough duration that it wants to make power at, at and, and obviously the heads are not limiting the flow at this power level. So this is what they do. Whatever you're starting out with, this is what happens when you add boost to it. So think about that. Think about what I'm going to do to my NA curve. And if I improve that and I add boost to that, there's just going to be more of whatever I put into the NA curve. That's why when I'm telling you about camshafts, every cam is a turbo cam. So it's whatever you're starting out with, then you add boost to that, it's going to work. Same thing with an intake manifold, same thing with a cylinder head. So whenever you're considering doing your modifications, Think about what it does to your NA motor and then just add boost to that. So let's take a look now and see what happened when we added boost to our second combination. I'm, I'm going to make sure that it not, it's not confusing. So we'll take these one at a time. So this was our NA version. This was one with the 706 heads, the brand Thule stage two turbo cam and the truck manifold. Here's what happened when we added boost to it. Uh, same same kind of boost curves or similar boost peak amount uh, compared to the other one. And you can see, again, we have the similar thing. We have the big bulge in the torque curve in the 5,000 range. We have the power, the continuing to make power out to almost 7,000 RPM. We basically have the turbo curve mimicking what the NA curve did. So anything that we did to improve our power on our NA curve, as I showed you on the previous graph, is going to carry over when we look at it in terms of boost. And so the guys that want to see a comparison between the two turbo combinations, what I'm going to do here is I will we'll go ahead and show you that. So this will be our turbo combination. I'll go ahead and get rid of our fuel flow because that tends to confuse things. And I'll go ahead and label these like I did with the NA curves and you guys can kind of take a look at that. So you can see the one that's making a lot more power everywhere like it did when it was NA is our, is our new turbo combo. And now the gains have gotten even greater. And you can see that the thing that we did to our NA combination by making it more, having more average power and more power everywhere, basically from the bottom to the top by having a long runner intake manifold, a better camshaft, and actually in this case, a better cylinder head, at least a smaller combustion chamber and smaller valve and stuff. The 706 head makes more power than 317 head so basically every part that we combined made more power than its counterpart and we saw that on the na combination it made more na power and guess what yes when we add boost to that it continues to make more power which is why i'm trying to drive home the very important message whatever you're starting with adding boost to that is going to mimic what you did to your na power curve and with that let's get to our conclusion Okay, guys, what's the takeaway on this comparison between our two combinations of the 4.8 liter, one with the 706 head, the long runner truck manifold, and a fairly mild Brian Tooley Racing Stage 2 cam. Remember, you could have used any other camshaft in that combination as well because it had a good cylinder head and a good long runner intake manifold on it. You could use the truck Norris cam or a Stage 1 or 2 truck cam. Anything mild would have worked out, and we're going to talk about why. On the other combination, we use a 317 head, you know, low compression. We used a camshaft, a BTR blower cam, positive displacement blower cam that tends to push power higher in the RPM range, 120 degree LSA. And then we also used a short runner sniper or a race sniper intake manifold. Again, pushes power up top, loses the mid-range power. And we saw that. We saw that one combination in our naturally aspirated comparison made a lot more average power, especially in the middle, up by as much as 50 foot-pounds compared to the other. And that's a function of all of these things that we did. This is why when I tell you that every camshaft is a turbo camshaft, we ran a turbo camshaft, we ran a blower camshaft, we could have run an NA camshaft or a nitrous camshaft, and they will all do the same thing. People need to stop thinking about their cam choices as whether or not I have to have a turbo specific camshaft or a nitrous camshaft and start thinking about it the way that I presented it in this video. 
Figure out what you're going to do to your NA combination. Whatever the NA combination is, whatever you're starting out with, whether we started out with our not so good combination or our even better combination, when we add boost to that, we are just multiplying what is there. So in the case of our turbo combination, I would pick a very mild camshaft. Ultimately, the turbo is going to dictate what kind of power we make. And here's what I mean by every camshaft is a turbo camshaft. And by the way, every intake manifold is a turbo intake manifold. Every cylinder head is a turbo in, is a turbo cylinder head because we are just multiplying what is there. But in terms of camshaft, the great thing about picking a smaller camshaft and not necessarily a turbo camshaft, but a milder camshaft is if we have a 750 horsepower turbo, we we can make 750 horsepower. And the great thing about not selecting too big of a camshaft, if we pick a milder camshaft, we're gonna have two other benefits from picking the milder camshaft. We're still gonna be able to produce our 750 horsepower because we have a 750 horsepower turbo, but we're gonna have better drivability with the milder camshaft and we're gonna have better boost response. So we're gonna have more boost down low where we're gonna be taking advantage of it much more often than all of the top end charge that we would get. You're gonna have better drivability, better boost response and still be be able to make all the power that we want to make based on our turbo choice. That's why every camshaft is a, is a turbo camshaft and why every cylinder head and every intake manifold is also a turbo intake manifold and turbo cylinder head. But when you're choosing your camshaft for a turbo application, that's why I always recommend the smaller cam. I'm Richard Older. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.